So what I have here is my 10 watt system and my 8 watt system. Both utilize the same lens, the same spacer, the same distances. But for this exercise, I'm going to use the 10 watt one and I'm going to attach it to my CNC router. I'm trying to do all of this while holding it with one hand. Okay, I have uh, my uh, assembly made so that the laser bolts onto the underside of my standard spindle. It's just got a, uh, a clamp, I do that up, clamp is done. I then run the cables neatly through this guide here. They then connect to my laser control box. I've got the TTL line, I've also got the power line, and I've got the temperature sensor, which runs around to the other side here. I've also got uh, a grounding clip because the bracket that uh, mounts the laser is anodized, um, it uh, can insulate the uh, bracket from the actual body of the, the machine. So uh, I just put an extra clip there just to make sure it's all, uh, it's all connected properly. So uh, now that that's, that's done, I have my air assist here, which I'm uh, not going to use for the moment, but I can uh, adjust that up and down. Um, and also the tube above here is held in position by a little clip across there when I actually need it. But I'm going to, for this exercise, I'm not going to use any air assist. So we've got the laser mounted, connected. Down below here, I've got uh, my uh, control and I'm going to turn the power on and I'm going to turn the uh, power for the uh, 12 volt Peltier cooling on my laser control box and I'm just turned the power on for that. I have uh, got this all calibrated so that if I place a piece of say black for this exercise black anodized aluminium under the head you will notice that I had a screw protruding down um, from the bottom of the laser what I've got here is a touch plate. I'm using a program called Mac3 to control my laser and my CNC router. That allowed me to incorporate um, a uh, touch plate into it so that it makes it very easy for setting up the distance for focus. So uh, by using the touch plate, I can consistently set my, the distance of my laser to the work surface quite easily. I will now bring the head down and I bring it down to just where the screw is about to touch the touch plate. Position that in, up on my um, control up here. I will show you that um, I've got a button that I can press here And that will cause the head to come down. Once it hits the touch plate, it will make contact and then it will rise up. And uh, I've now got a distance of 34.5 millimeters from the back of the spacer to the surface of the laser. I've just, I've worked that all out before to calibrate it. This is a 10 millimeter touch plate uh, the screw come down, comes down, hits it, makes contact. The algorithm in Mac 3 causes the head to rise by two millimeters, primarily just so that I can easily remove the, uh, the touch plate. And uh, the length of that screw is then set so that I've got um, the right 
uh, distances. As I previously mentioned, and uh, this is if you don't have Mac 3 or a touch plate or a CNC router with the uh, type of uh, height position that I am able to set up here, the uh, very simple way of doing it is first of all, if you're using all the dimensions that I'm stating in my uh, videos and uh, what I'm showing you, I've uh, found that 34.5 millimeters from the back of the spacer to the surface of the workpiece is what's needed. So I just then adjust the height of my laser to sort of suit. What you can then do once you've got that done and you run some tests is that you could make another piece of material and use another common reference like I could use the underside of this or I could use the underside of that heat sink so that I put the surface that I'm going to be engraving there, place that uh, constant, I could then manually just drop that slightly so that it's sitting on the surface of that, bring it out and away I go. I've got a constant. The main thing is that you have a common reference point, a distance that uh, is totally repeatable from when you take your laser off and put it back on again. I find doing it this way, I never have to refocus my laser um, unless I pull the uh, the spacer and the lens out to clean it and put it back again. So it's a completely repeatable way of doing it. So what I'm going to do now is an engraving test. I'm going to use a piece of uh, black anodized aluminium. Um, I find that uh, it's the best material to show just how tightly focused the laser is and just how accurate I've got everything set up. Uh, the thing about uh, using anodized aluminium over wood, timber, paper, cardboard, any other material, plastic, is there is no overburn. Uh, what the laser hits is all that it will mark. It won't mark anything either side of that. So you'll be able to get a really good indication of just how good your focus is and how tight your beam is. So that's why I use black anodized aluminium. I've got uh, my PWM set to 3% and I'm going to turn the laser on and you'll see a little blue spot. I'm going to focus this in so that you can see what's going on there and um, because I've only got 3%, some, some of you may need only 1% or whatever, um, that spot is just of such low power that it won't even burn paper. It won't do anything. I could probably put my hand under there and it wouldn't um, have any effect on it whatsoever. So now I, will, I use that to position where I want my engraving to be. I've set my reference up to be the center. I'm going to engrave a small cross that'll give me an indication of the X and Y um, distances and now once I've got that set up I'll turn the laser off now I'm going to switch the PWM to maximum 100% power I am going to put my goggles on and uh, you should be able to see this happen it's going to all go in a very short just a few seconds here we go doing the cross and it's over so there you go now I'll zoom the camera back out again and um, that's the cross that I just did there and you can see just how uh, how tight it is now one thing I find it's always handy to have I use here a 20 by magnifying glass and the reason I do a cross is to make sure the X width is the same as the Y width which means that shows me that I've got almost a perfect square. I've got um, various other test patterns, I've got little lines I think you can see there and uh, further in this video I'll be showing you some microscope 
views of some of these tests that I've just done with this laser. Okay. So apart from doing the cross and engraving the cross onto the black anodized aluminium, the other quick test I uh, quite often do is I want to just have a single spot. So the way that I do that is I've got my PWM set to 3%. I'm going to turn my laser on. And you can see I've got the spot there to position it. Let's say I want to just do a single spot just here. Okay, so then I will turn the laser power very briefly to 100% using the bypass switch. So here we go, and I just close my eyes and look away to do this, because I'm only gonna have it flicked on for a second. So it's on, currently it's on focus 3% power. I'm gonna just now flick it to 100%, and then off again. And I'm going, I just then go out and I look, that's the spot. It's very bit hard to sort of focus here. Let me just sit that there and let me try and show you as much as best as possible. That was the spot that I just did. And even without the magnifying glass, you can see that's, that's almost, that's virtually perfectly square. So I know that um, I'm uh, pretty much on the ball there. Okay, so that's generally before I do any engraving and I'm checking my focus, I'll do that spot test um, using my scrap piece of anodized aluminium. And when I get it uh, as good as I possibly can, that's how I know that I'm pretty much focused. Now, as I mentioned before, once I've got this all set up and um, I've got my distances correct, I very rarely have to do this anymore. It's only if I make a major change to the, um, to the system that I would ever have to do this test again. I... So I'm just gonna do one little last thing that I uh, suddenly thought of and realized that some people might not have ready access to a piece of anodized black aluminium. So what I've just done is I've taken a little scrap of ordinary aluminium and I've just given it a quick spray with satin black paint. I only had satin black but I would probably suggest my preference would be for a matte black paint. So I've done that. I've baked this piece in the oven for about 10 minutes to make sure the paint is really hard and I've got my laser spot set and I've already set the focus distance to be what I need at 34.5. And I'm just gonna give this a go. I've not done this before, so we'll all see just how it turns out at the same time. Switching to maximum power, and I'm gonna do my standard cross again, and goggles on. I will see how it goes. And that's it. Okay. All right, now let's take this out. Right, oh, I've got um, quite a nice little cross. This there. is the digital microscope that I've used to capture my images. I purchased this on eBay probably three or four years ago and um, don't use it very much, but it is a handy thing to have around. I've got it mounted and held down with a block of aluminium because the base that it comes with is a bit unstable. But uh, it serves the purpose. It's a USB device, plugs into the USB port of my computer and it allows me to display an image on my screen and also capture that image to a still file which I can then use for posting or for future reference. So to finish up, 
I ran some tests using black anodized aluminium and taking the images with my digital microscope. I created a file that generated vertical lines 0.1 millimeter spaced apart, 0.075 millimeters spaced apart, and 0.05 millimeters spaced apart. The image here definitely shows that the laser spot is less than 0.1 millimeters, also slightly less than 0.075 millimeters, but a little more than 0.05 millimeters. So I am estimating here that my laser spot is probably around about 0.06 something millimeters wide. So I hope you've all got something out of this video and that it will uh, enable you to uh, progress further with your own projects. I look forward to doing the next one.